Just a real quick disclaimer, this is just going to be a cozy educational vid talking about agriculture for the most part. So if you're here to listen to me talk about uh, cum or homunculi sex, I mean you don't have to leave, but this video isn't going to have any of that kind of content. Thanks. So let me tell you about rations. The equipment and supply table in D&D hasn't really changed that much between 1989 and now. Gary Gygax also didn't really care about rations as much as he could have, so let me care about rations for him. And you, dear YouTube person. For the chads in the audience who have never experienced or played D&D, the game originally had two kinds of rations. There were iron rations, which were salted and preserved food, and just normal rations, which represented any kind of fresh food that would expire in a week's time if not eaten. Right now, 5th edition cut just cut the middleman out entirely, and the equipment table only has rations, quote-unquote. Rations in 5th edition are... it's trail mix. Mixed nuts, dried fruit, hardtack, and quote-unquote jerky. This feels anacrostic to me, and I don't like using it, because I find food actually interesting. Rations need to be cheap, non-perishable, and not too heavy. It's supposed to ideally be something your players should be able to casually purchase in most any town without issue, but also persist and nourish the party for however long their armpit deep in dungeoning. Remember, every time your player characters take a short or long rest, they're supposed to be eating. So without further delay, let me ration you some food information for you to use. In ye olde adventuring times, there's mostly two food groups when it comes to rations. The first group is flour, coarse grains, and or legumes. Flour is, of course, finely ground wheat, rye, or corn. Coarse grains are cereals like rice, oats, barley, and millet, where you can just eat the unmilled boiled seed. And legumes are things like beans and chickpeas and peas. Foodstuffs, like cereals, are vital staples of not just the peasanty types, but all the types. Something like 70 to 80% of a ye olde person's diet was just composed of grains in some form or another. Whether that be bread, porridge, or even ale. So you can be pretty sure every town is going to have some genre of gluten. Unless something terrible has happened. Peas and beans were also a pretty dependable crop, and what most European peoples were eating as the second most popular not-bread option, before potatoes or corn made it into the picture. I will note, though, that in feudal societies, wheat is grown more like a cash crop that's used to pay taxes, with the peasanty types ironically not having as much of it as you would, uh, think, and instead eating a lot more browns like oats, barley, and rye. Which, actually, when potatoes were brought into Europe, especially Ireland and Prussia, you could really game this system now even harder, because the new meta would be to just stuff all your peasant farmhands on as little land as possible, have them survive on nothing but their potato crop, and then on the new opened up land, use that to grow wheat and just sell all of it. The peasants don't have to eat any of it. Finally, the second food group is your proteins. That's gonna be dried pork, salted fish, and cheese. It's specifically going to be dried pork because pigs turn garbage into meat. No other animal is better at this than pigs, so it makes them an excellent source of cheap processed meat. Beef is going to be both uncommon, expensive, and arguably less tasty, because they're simply more useful alive either pulling a plow or making milk. If salted or cured beef is at the market, it's going to be coming from the oldest, toughest oxen who spent his entire life working or some poor, dried-out, retired dairy cow. I want to add a disclaimer for all time travelers in the audience. Some of the pork might come from toilet pigs. A toilet pig is a pig kept in an outhouse for the explicit purpose of eating human feces, just so you know. Furthermore, in cities with large enough sewer systems, pigs will also just help themselves to feces in general. They just can't help themselves. And you know what makes even better cheap pork? Random feral sewer pigs not owned by anyone. Nobody has to know. Nobody has to know, YouTube viewer. Moving over to the kosher option, generic dried and salted fish is almost always going to be cod. If you're in a warmer climate inland, it might be tilapia, but it's probably cod. Cod is just the king of dried fish rations. Nothing can touch it. This is because cod is stupidly abundant, and is a really lean whitefish that keeps for years when dried. 
all of which make it a perfect food for long voyages. The Norse and the Bosque people were able to make it to North America hundreds of years before the rest of Europe, explicitly because they were following the abundance of cod. Seriously, cod used to be so numerous you didn't even have to use nets or hooks, you could just scoop them up with a bucket. Finally, cheese is a ration, because it's literally how you preserve the gallons of milk produced by cows every day. Like you process it into butter or government cheese for storage. For a lot of people throughout history, the unbelievable meat substitute was cheese. Because sans a side of salted pork, it was the cheapest source of available protein that wasn't a sad bowl of beans. Fuck it, we're almost at six minutes. I can cover dried fruit and nuts. Dried fruit is kind of niche in adventuring medieval time period. I realize that's a weird statement to make. The issue here is fresh fruit is just infinitely more commodifiable in ye older times is either a sweet treat best eaten fresh, or something to be made into cider. Like you went to the trouble of growing this lousy goddamn orchard, you're not gonna spend it making cheap fruit leather for murder hobos. Not all fruit. But not all fruit leaves us with weird niche foraged hedged garden fruits like persimmons and rose hips. Nuts are also kind of niche for similar reasons just in the regard that clearing a forest to plow and seed a field of actual god-fearing crops is always going to be more economical than cuckolding yourself to gay trees. Not that the peasantry were nutless, but in good times they'll be fattening their pigs on them, and in bad times people will be keeping their nuts to themselves. Spaghetti, what about vegetables? They're too heavy. It's not practical. Who's gonna carry 10 pounds of potatoes or onions? The cleric? Granted, if you can alleviate the weight and space vegetables take up, it's well worth to have lots of delicious, non-perigible starch on hand. Ye olde mercenary bands and armies resolve this by having designated porters and camp followers to pull the burdensome onion cart. But as a fantastical adventurer, you could have a designated bag of holding 500 pounds of vegetables and effectively become a grocer god. Though, if you're going the magical route, there's no better method to resolving hunger than just having a ring of sustenance. Just skip the middleman out entirely, say goodbye to logistics and become the ideal World Economic Forum citizen, and let the enchanted ring relinquish your character's need for food or drink. Or going to the bathroom for that matter. Characters that wear a ring of sustenance don't have to go to the bathroom. That's why they take shorter rests. With that last vital piece of wisdom, I'll see you later. Thanks for hanging around. Bye-bye.